Well, hello everybody and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Steve and this little red guy right next to me is a brand new SSD from Corsair. They're unveiling their brand new Neutron XT series. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. Let's talk about some of the basics. It is a 2.5 inch form factor. It is seven millimeter Z height. Uh, the standard SATA revision three, six gigabit per second interface here, uh, obviously for data and for power, excuse me, backwards, that's for data, that's for power. Flip around to the back so you can see this is the 240 gigabyte capacity. It also comes in 480 as well as 960. It has a five year warranty and it's painted nice and red on this metal uh, chassis that they have. So let's talk a little bit about the controller inside of it. Uh, they're working with Fison on this. Uh, the actual model number is PS3110S10, or S10 for short. It has a, a supremely, uh, it has an awesome feature set, uh, primarily around, around reliability. Fison's basically int implemented a uh, enterprise level CRC and ECC uh, to correct and detect errors that might pop up between the controller, the DRAM, and flash. Also, they're, they're including smart ECC, and that's basically going to be used uh, when there is uh, normal code correcting basically misses it. Smart refresh is going to improve data retention by monitoring the blocks and periodically refreshing them. It also has uh, basically smart flush, which is used to ensure data protection in the event of power loss. Uh, Smart Flush is basically intelligently flushing the memory in an effort to limit the time data spends in cache. Uh, it also has advanced wear leveling and garbage collection. That's obviously to provide better uh, long-term performance for this drive. Also using the Corsair SSD toolbox software, you can monitor the drive's health, securely wipe the NAND, and update the firmware. So I've cracked a seal on this SSD chassis so that you guys can see what's on the inside. I don't recommend doing that though because obviously you're gonna void your warranty. So unless you don't care about doing that, uh, I would not do that. So, okay. So as you can see on the inside, everything on this PCB uh, for this SSD, including some of the most important parts and that's these NAND chips. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, that is Toshiba's NAND. It's the A19 nanometer MLC or multi-level cell NAND flash memory. Eight packages of that. Of course, we have the Fison controller, the S10. And uh, we also have some Nanya memory. I believe it's 128 uh, megabyte cache here. So that's gonna help out so it doesn't have to write any of the things it needs to cache straight to the, the MLC memory itself. It can just write it straight to this, uh, this DRAM, making that much, much faster. Uh, now, a couple other things I want to mention about the controller that's that's fairly important, or more important that I should talk about the SATA Rev3 uh, being actually maxed out. This this uh, the throughput that we've been seeing on the tests that I did uh, show it actually getting really, really close to 600 megabytes per second. Um, in Addo, uh, Corsair says that it's going to get 560 megabytes. Uh, per second on the read and 540 on the write. In IOMeter, they're saying 100,000 IOPS or input output operations per second on the read and 90K uh, on the write. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at those benchmarks and see how it shows up. I'm using one of our X79 uh, systems to benchmark this. So we have Microsoft Windows 7 64-bit Enterprise Edition, an Intel Core i7-4960X Extreme Edition uh, processor. On top of that, we're using 16 gigabytes of DDR3 quad-channel uh, kit of memory from G-Skill. It's a Trident X kit. Uh, once again, uh, it is, of course, X79 motherboard, and it's the Asus Rampage 4 formula board that we have. Um, I'm using the native SATA Rev3 6 gigabit per second uh, connector on the board uh, and the Intel RSTE uh, drivers version 3.6.1094. So let's start off the benchmarks here with uh, Blackmagic's disk speed test. Now this speed test is uh, it's intended to help you figure out what's the best speed that your drive could uh, could be set up for, what it's rated for, depending on what kind of video editing you're going to do, depending on the color um, depth that you're using and the resolutions. So you can see it's only got a couple check boxes here that it's not adequate for these different resolutions uh, and color depths. But aside from that, it's good across the board. Strictly speaking on the reads and writes, uh, we are looking at 512 megabytes per second on the read and 487.3 on the writes. And moving right along from there, we have Atto Disk Benchmark, and this is really popular amongst manufacturers. Uh, they like to use this in order to show what speeds that their drive could actually attain. 
Now, uh, we're using QDepth 4 here, which is, which is way more than what a standard system would actually use, uh, and also QDepth 10 just to give the drive the most room to breathe and the maximum amount of data to transfer just to see how far it can go with speeds. Uh, but taking a look here, it looks like we are maxed out at uh, 500 or 552 megabytes per second on the right, and it looks like 569 megabytes per second on the read at QDepth 4. Uh, jumping over to QDEP 10, we're seeing um, pretty much the, the same numbers, 551 megabytes per second on the writes and 569 megabytes per second on the reads. Now moving right along to Crystal Disk Mark version 3.03 uh, that we have here, uh, we're seeing sequential reads of, for, or for, excuse me, sequential reads of 490 megabytes per second and writes of 520. Uh, the 512K, the 4K, and the 4K queued up 32 numbers uh, you guys can see here. Uh, these are random, which is, which is uh, actually quite nice speeds. If I jump down to the bottom, we can look at the actual IOPS as it converts over. Nearly 100,000, so 99,000, uh, uh, and then 90,000 uh, for the reads and writes. So that's, that's right up there where uh, Corsair is suggesting this, this drive will actually perform. That's quite fast, actually. Uh, then if I go over to uh, compressible or zero fill, whereas before I was just talking about um, uh, uncompressible data, which is standard, but this actually gets a, a bit higher sequential read for some reason. We're looking at 531 megabytes per second versus the 490 that we saw a moment ago. And once again, 520 megabytes per second on the writes. Jumping down to a random read and write, uh, IOPS, we start at uh, 37,000 and 24,000 respectively for the 4K QDEP1. And if you, if you round that up to uh, QDEP32 or rack, rack that up, you get 101,000 on the read and 90,000 on the write. So those are really impressive numbers. Uh, then we move into AS SSD benchmark. And I have IOPS on the right and I have uh, megabytes per second on the left. So starting with megabytes per second, sequentially we're looking at reads of 513 megabytes per second and, and uh, the write speeds 495. Uh, 4K, uh, we're, we're seeing 41 megabytes per second and 97 megabytes per second on read and writes. Uh, you can see the rest from here. Access time uh, seems like it's, it's uh, 0.125 milliseconds at sort of high and then one really low one at 0 0.039 milliseconds in terms of access time. You usually want it to be below uh, 0.05, but either way, I mean, these numbers are extremely fast and far faster than a, a standard hard drive would be versus an SSD. Uh, then looking at IOPS, uh, we can see it starts out at about 32. We want to look at these bigger numbers, the 4K64 thread, and that's at 98,000 for the read. And the writes uh, uh, dipping a bit to 36,000. And moving right along, AS SSD also has a copy benchmark, and it's sort of uh, synthetic here. It tries to mimic copying in ISO or programs or, or games. So we're seeing 397 megabytes per second, a duration of 2.7 seconds. Uh, 306 at 4.6 seconds and 402 at 3.43. Of course, you could just go ahead and download that uh, benchmark and try and benchmark these numbers on your own and see how your drive at home compares. And I jumped into the compression benchmark just because I, I wanted to ensure that there was no difference here for compression, which there is not, or otherwise we would see some kind of an, an incline here as the compression uh, does the data that's being transferred becomes more compressible. Uh, so 0% all the way up to 100% compressible. These numbers don't really change here except for the initial dip as it gets started. Um, so we're, we're, we're seeing it start somewhere around maybe 422, 25 megabytes per second on the uh, reads. And then it sort of, sort of evens out around 520 with a, a spike at 527. Uh, at that same moment at 527, you're seeing 504 megabytes per second on the writes. Uh, stay, it, it dips quite a bit here. Uh, from time to time as it, it, as it goes along the line, but that's just gonna happen, I think, as the cache fills up and moves along. Okay, guys, so that's gonna wrap up this overview and benchmarking video about the Neutron XT SSDs from Corsair. And this SSD is actually quite high performing. So if you're in the market for something new to replace that, uh, that current hard drive or possibly SSD in your gaming rig, definitely pick this up. It's going to help you load games a lot faster. Uh, if you're a photographer or a videographer, it's definitely going to help you with those larger read and writes that you're going to need to do in order to create those videos and or work with those pictures. So thanks so much for watching, guys. If you liked it, click the like button. Otherwise, we'll see you guys very soon.